once upon a nation that people come and tell stories here. Yeah, it's for the walk of the Philadelphia walk. Well, we're here to
which said there was enough evidence to warrant a case, 12 in this box, 12 in this box, okay? And if you were brought in here for trial, you could bring witnesses in here to testify on your behalf, and you could question those who would testify against you. Witnesses gave their testimony up here in the witness box after having sworn the same oath you hear in an American or British courtroom to this day. That shall tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. The jury of 12, which decided to guilt of innocence, met right here in this box. Now, there are some differences. Come here, my young friends. Come with me. Right up in here, girls. Oh, Now, here's a man guilty. <laughs> <laughs> this friends, let me look front there. Wait, you turn around right there. Let him look front over here. This is the prisoner's box. This is where the prisoners literally stood trial. And you didn't slouch, you didn't slump, because if you did, the bailiff would use his chip stand. That's a brass tip. You smack him on the back of the head. You got the idea real quick that you stood trial. Now here we have a gang of desperados. All right. What says this jury? Are these guys innocent or guilty? Guilty. Guilty. Oh, I'm innocent until I'm Being our prisoners of the bed. Thank you, Joe. Lawyers from both sides sat at this table. Yeah, your lawyer was sitting with a guy trying to put you in the jail. You better hope your lawyer's on the up and up. They didn't do deals in those states like they do today. We had to set for five or three judges tonight. Uh, if you were here for a minor offense, it'd be one judge. Something more serious, three. A capital offense where you might pay with your life, there'd be five judges up there. Imagine being brought in here with all the crowd who can hop and all the apparatus and five judges. If it didn't kill you, it would scare you to death. Okay? So it's, it's quite a thing. Now we do have an original piece in the room, just one. It's that placard right there. That's the coat of arms of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Now, up until the 8th of July, 1776, there would have been another coat of arms up there, and it would have looked like this. It was a 200 pound wooden sculpture of a lion in the uniform of Great Britain, symbol of King George III. No. On the 8th of July, 1776, out here in the back, they read the Declaration of Independence for the American people for the All very right. first time. Militia men from Pennsylvania came in here, they pulled this off the wall, they paraded it around the city all that day, and that night they committed an act of treason. They dropped them onto a bonfire and they burned it. This took its place in, in 1785 and it's been hanging there ever since. Now, what about the Revolution? Yeah, April 19, 1775. After 12 years of protesting taxes and troops being quartered in our homes, the war broke out between 13 tiny colonies on the east coast of North America and the world superpower of the day, Great Britain. There was already a meeting called for that room across the hall, the assembly room. Uh, it was the second continent of Congress. And those men were sent here to try to find ways to ease the tensions and compromise. Well, they tried. They tried hard, but they failed. And when they failed, events happened in that room that made it one of the most important, not only in the history of this country, but as events we've had in the history of the world. So I invite you to go across the hallway to the assembly room and we'll continue our story there. Spread out right across the back of the room, there's plenty of room for everyone. Now this is the room you came 
here to see today, ladies and gentlemen, this is the assembly room at Independence Hall. This is where the Second Continental Congress began meeting on the 5th of May, 1775. Now remember, war had broken out up here in Lexington and Concord, up here in Boston, uh, back on April 19th. So the war was already on when these guys came here. Now they did what they were sent here to do. They sent a letter to King George III, and it's called the Olive Branch Petition. The Olive Branch of Peace was offered to King George one last time. Now, in that letter, Congress asked King George to stop the fighting and to compromise on the issues that were arriving. Issues like uh, taxation, representation in Parliament, acts of trade, those writs of assistance, those were those uh, general search warrants in British Union, and the quartering of troops in our homes at our own expense. Well, they got a reply from King George III. He told these 